Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman by heading over to patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. That's patreon.com slash G-A-M-E-F-U-L-L-Y Unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Podcast mit Tom Reimann und David Bell. I just drink a whole coffee. Mm, okay. And I shouldn't have. Probably not, but we'll see how long it takes us to get through this doc. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, hello, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> hello. 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 You just got through telling me you drank an entire thing of coffee and you can't say hello, Dave. Hello. Well, I'm saying hello. Hypecast. Hypecast. <laughs> Sure, we get hyped about stuff and things. I'm your co-host Tom Ryman. This is gonna be a weird one. Yeah, I'm your other. I'm your other co-host David Bell. Mm-hmm. D- old David Bell. You know him. Yeah. Who else is here? Yeah, I'm Abe Epperson. You? Surprise hey. guest. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. The crowd Welcome goes wild. <sighs> How are you? You know, I'm good. Abe, yeah. are you um? Are you are you excited for Subnautica? Um, yes, I think so. I didn't play the original. Oh, okay. You should play the original. But I'm really into No Man's Sky right now, and so I think that this is gonna be it's gonna benefit from years of polish, of just mm-hmm. general games getting more polished. Yeah. And I'll be like, you know what? My tastes have kind of changed. I'm really. You know? I'm really hoping to jump in No Man's Sky, but there's fucking Subnautica screeching in, mm. and it might scoop me up. Uh, okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. But how are you? How are things? Uh, you know, can't complain. Uh, nothing comes on the top. Uh, nothing comes off the top of my head as to like new information. I'm getting my second shot real soon. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, so that's gonna be a whole, you know, good two days, three days. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows, uh, man? So, I was yeah. still. There's no way of knowing. Yeah, I was. I felt fine, like right after. Mm-hmm. Uh, then the the next day it was shitty, and then the day after that I was fine, and then the day after that it was shitty again. It's just it's madness. Yeah. Yeah. I I never heard that happen, Tom. That's fucking weird. It's madness. <laughs> you got the hot bones, right? Yeah. I, yeah, yeah. I got the spicy bones, the sharp it, bones. It faked you out. It was. Yeah. It was like, oh, you're fine. No, oh, no. Yep. You're sick again. <laughs> yeah. I I I got the hot bones as well, but I got them consistently the next day, and then I just got better after a few days. You might get the. You might get no hot bones, Abe. I you might, don't know. I might get. Uh, I I think I told. Was I telling you guys? Maybe I told someone else. After the first shot, I think I, I was like, "There's nothing." It was absolutely nothing. Um, yeah. But Same. then, yeah. like, I know I did notice that one time because your your brain is thinking, you know, I'm probably I've got to look for these symptoms, right? And you're just thinking, you're just in generally, you're assuming that something's gonna go wrong. Uh, yeah, there's and, a psychosomatic response. Yeah, and so yeah. I noticed one. I noticed like the second day in the evening, I like put my hand down there and felt my balls, and I was like, As my, one ball, does. "My balls are hot. That's weird. Mm-hmm. Are they usually this hot?" And I freaked out. I totally freaked out. <laughs> I was like, heated your balls. I have hot I balls. I, I assume that, but I listen, think it was just balls normal balls. Are hot. I think it's just so normal you, balls. But I just assumed. yeah. Have you kept a like a running temp on your no, balls? No, I started. Then? I started a spreadsheet, a Google. Okay, doc. good. Because then you're gonna want to find out mm. the temperature of your balls right after the yeah, second control shot. group and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think they're just warm down there. Yeah, I, I think. 
I think that's my realization is that uh, yeah, it's pretty hot. You it's can pretty get, hot. Like, a real heat and, the, and coming it started off of getting them. hotter in LA, you know. And I was like, Ooh, yeah, yeah, no, you get some real. It hot. gets real swampy down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my hot balls. Yeah, yeah. Abe's hot hot balls, hot balls. There's that story. Yeah, yeah that so, is a story. Yeah, so yeah, we're we're retitling this uh, podcast uh, Abe's Hot Balls. <laughs> Abe's hot balls. Hot balls. Now we're hot ready to begin, balls. right? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh, should we start the episode? Probably. Might no. as well. All right. I mean, we're here. Well, we're all here. Yeah, that's fair. We have producers. We have some producers to thank. Um, big thank you to Jake. Jake. Thank you, Jake. Okay. <laughs> I love Jake. Nice and easy. Fucking killing uh, it, Jake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> also, thank you to uh, Numino Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis Jones. Mm, Jeff Just May as easy as does Jake. not like sports. Yeah, that's their alternate title. Uh, thank you to the baby from Eraserhead. Always. Thank you very much. Thank you to Chiz Lily Tits. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you to Marshall Law. Thank you to These Seven Bees. Mm. Thank you to Breezy Ruizy. Thank you to Davy Francis for the revenge. Woo. Thank you to MVB. Thank you to Phaedrus. Woo. Thank you. Thank you to Ryan, Woo. the silly money goose. Thank you to Chester's prophet. Thank you to definitely, definitely Lee, not Guillermo del Toro. Certainly not. Chester's prophet. Yeah. Chester's prophet sounds like a friend's band. But like I was a, about to say, like it's a like bad a 90s, one, like a bad yeah. friends band, but or you like a two thousands. I'm band. really yeah. into the, the money goose. <laughs> I just <laughs> want, I want a money goose now. Oh like, yeah, to have. Like, Do you have yeah, yeah. a goose filled with money? Do you yeah. have a preference uh, as far as its uh, disposition? Does it need to be silly? It needs to be calm as fuck because I'm not going to have like a money goose that is like <laughs> freaking out. I'm not going to have some wacky bird yeah. handling my money. Yeah, so I don't like the silly money goose part, but money goose. Ooh, I, need, money goose. I need a money goose who's all business. Because <laughs> I mean, free money, free goose. I mean, you got it all. All right. Uh, let me uh, get jump in here. Thanks to Brian, who Tom knows. That's true. It's I do. True. Thank you to Bob Grenville. Thank, Thank you to Stephen. Stephen. Thank you to Down Home Chicken. Thank you to Han Toomey, the Confused Cyborg. Thank, Thank you, you to Asking Seven. Thank you to Thank Hey, you. Fuck You, I'm Happy Ed. Thank you to Thank I Was you. Born to Stare. Thank, Thank you, you to Dracula, the Bus Driving Vampire. Count. Thank you to Tiger Thank Drawers, you. Pratt Thompson. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Nice. Thank you to Dan Hackroyd. Thank you. Thank you to the Kool-Aid man says, get your vaccine. COVID sucks. I have proof. It does. The proof being that Bill Maher was diagnosed with COVID. <laughs> he was. Oh, and the, sta- oh. the statement makes it, s- the statement uh, from his people make it super unclear whether he was vaccinated before or after he tested positive. Oh, no. That doesn't seem right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> seems like a bonehead uh, move. Yeah. It- well, uh, in... The tests that they're using to do these daily tests for production ha- are have been known to pretty frequently produce false positives, so it could be right. that. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so who knows? But anyway. Well, our <laughs> thoughts are out I guess, for Bill Maher, yeah, I guess. Get better no, Bill Maher. A- absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the official position of Hypecast. The yeah. official position. <laughs> all uh, right. Well, we have speaking, some trailers. Yeah, I was about to say, speaking of all things the fish... Yeah. And position. All right. Well, let's let's start let's with um Honestly, we could start and end the episode with this. Really? I don't mm. need any of the rest of this bullshit. <laughs> well, this is the trailer for <laughs> Venom. I love Let this. there be carnage. Oh my god. <laughs> this is this is a fun ass <clears throat> trailer. Yeah. I have it is. to say Harry Nielsen's one is the perfect song for this trailer. Oh yeah. Perfect. Mm-hmm. I have some reservations. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah. I I looked up the movie. Mm-hmm. It's the writer of the first Venom, who also is the writer of Fifty Shades of Grey, Saving Mr. Banks, Cruella, uh, and not much else. Uh, you know who's directing this? Yeah, Andy Serkis. It's Andy Serkis. Yeah. Gollum? Yeah. 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 Smeagol? Uh, and I don't know, man. He doesn't have too much... Uh, He's got he's got a couple of credits. He did that Jungle Book movie no one saw. Was that any good? Um P 
people I know a few people who really enjoy it. Um oh, okay. He does have kind of an odd sensibility to him, which is yeah. the thing that people liked about Venom was how batshit it is. Right. So right. just he lean, lean called... into that. Let's start the he trailer did... with the cop fucking alien making him breakfast. Do it. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, they're leaning into it. It's it seems like pretty typical trailer or uh sequel stuff. Yeah. Like let's have more fun with the thing that you found charming. Yeah. Uh generic part two. Iron Man two. This is gonna be Iron Man two. You know? Yeah. Which, you know. That's well, fine. I hope it I hope it'll be more uh, uh, unique than Iron Man I hope it know. will be too but they're gonna do it seems like they're doing the same kind of stuff this was sort of the I, I didn't I, I liked Venom people can go back and wa- listen to me and Tom's review of it if mm-hmm. they're curious I remember it being like my disappointment being that it was it's like all superhero things is when it seems like it could be unusual it ultimately can't be that yeah um, mm. It's still a superhero. It's got. It has a couple of uh, things to it, but it still has to hit all the same points of a superhero movie. Yeah. I yeah. also. I th- I yeah. seem to remember you saying it felt like kind of like '90s, which I agree with. I, yeah. It also it was disjointed, but I remember there was something like specific behind the scenes that happened. Right? They like something. It like was that. supposed to be R or something like that. I yeah, feel like which, it's two yeah. early two thousands. I think yeah, it's like aping that, Fincher. Yeah. I yeah. think that's what it is. Like yeah, everything sure. feels like a, um, like kind of feels like Fight Club and stuff, which I know is technically the '90s. But like it's that Fincher one once Fincher like nailed it, and everyone started like mutating their look and feel based off of like his right. films. And mm-hmm. so I'd say like this feels like 2004 film. Right. Yeah. That said, um, I don't know. Still probably fun. Um. Mm-hmm. Oh, my other reservation. They didn't keep the fucking clown wig on Woody Harrelson. They didn't, but have you seen? <laughs> they don't show any of the shots of it in in this trailer, but their their set photos leaked last year uh, of Woody Harrelson filming some scenes where he's like in a convenience store or whatever, and mm-hmm. he looks incredible. They gave him like the best mud flap wig. <laughs> like he's got he's got this sick ass nineties mullet, <laughs> like Billy Ray Cyrus hair. It's incredible. Oh, he lo- hell yeah. yeah, he he looks incredible. So he, I cho- he looks incredible. Yeah. So I have a confession. I I choose. I I don't know comic books. I don't know names. Almost every single thing that it's like, oh, that's this. I'm like, oh, oh, okay. So sure. I choose to believe that Woody Harrelson is playing himself in these movies. Like that is <laughs> canon in my head. <laughs> Because have we seen how? What have we seen of Woody Harrelson? Why haven't we seen him in like other? Or is he in DC? Like what's going on with Woody Harrelson and in, superhero in terms movies? of comic book? I don't he's, think he's been in one apart from Venom. Hasn't he been in like a credit scene of one of these movies? Venom. Venom. He was in Ven. Okay. Yeah. So it's just that was just straight up setting up. See, it all blurs together for old age. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That's totally fair. I So did we know why he was, like, was the point of that ending credit scene in Venom 1 was that, <laughs> oh, shit, Woody Harrelson's going to be in the movies? Or yeah, was it as like... As a, Carnage. He as is specifically Carnage. as this character. Yeah, 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 okay. And we were supposed to know that from a shot of a guy just, like, chilling in a, in a cell. <laughs> Yeah. They like say his name, they, right? They, they, say, they do something. Oh, they, okay. s- they say his name, and then he he says something like he says the word carnage. And he some says way. it's gonna be carnage. it's gonna be carnage. He, oh yeah, okay. excuse me. It's I a really sweaty line. I remember that now. It, right, but his Ronald McDonald wig. Yeah, and it's just the delightful all. surprise of seeing him in it was just like, all right. Is, is the Ronald yeah. Donald wig canon? Is that like what we know, like in the comic books? We no, know that this guy I, looks. No, he has red hair. Right, uh, but it's not. It's normally like either the character. He's like the a characters character. don't matter to me in these movies. Yeah, yeah, I guess. yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. so it's Venom or Carnage. It's not like Tom. Well, that's. It's yeah. like part of what it's what made the wig even more hilarious if you're like a fan of the comics because at no point does the character look like that. So it's like so why did they like, even, they're just adding right. shit. Right, yeah, why did they put this wig on? Him? That is see that that little contextual like that's where knowledge sets you free because that's <laughs> because just knowing that makes that really funny to me. Yeah, he super doesn't look see, like See, I just that. assumed all these choices were like 
exaggerated choices that are generally made by any comic book movie or any superhero movie where it's like this guy has white hair why because you know because like he does because yeah, no, he, he does and you're like all right so anytime they do a weird thing i just like roll with the punches right <laughs> so right. yeah yeah i like it better that woody harrelson is playing himself personally <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah, for no, sure. No, he's playing, I, I looked it up because I was curious, Cletus Cassidy, yeah. who is the host of, a serial killer who's the host of Carnage. I assume Carnage, because I, all right, for the longest time, I didn't know what the difference between Venom and Carnage was. Uh-huh. I just knew the red one. Uh, so it appears yeah. that Carnage is the red one, yep. Mm-hmm. And Carnage is a different symbiote, Yes. I assume, that came yeah. to, comes down to Earth yeah. and wraps around him. Okay. Like the last one, like the Venom one. Whatever yeah, his right, name was. Right, right, right. The, Havoc or whatever, Chaos or whatever uh, his name was. Riot, I think. Riot, uh, rage. And as of right <laughs> now, this isn't really part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. No. Yet, right? No. Not it a, feels no, outside not, it. Not, not officially, no. Yeah. I bet they sneaked some Stark posters in there. Maybe not, but. Something. I don't know. They, I mean, they can't. They, they can't might. Help I know. Themselves. They can't. You know, I they know can't. Michael Keaton is in Morbius because we all know that because he was in the trailer that we saw last right. year. Right, mm-hmm. and, and Morbius, Morbius <laughs> is part of the Sony's uh, Sony Spider Man. Uh, of all the Spider-Man things to, to first wrap into the Marvel universe, Morbius. Morbius. Uh, yeah. Uh, like this is Venom is the more hype thing, right? Like yeah, I want to see Spider Man in this movie. Yeah. Uh, I think it's all fucked up though, right? Like they they were like it was this thing where Sony was bought by Marvel or they had a deal and then the deal dissolved and yeah. so they had like a bunch of they were starting to set it up and now it seems like they're not quite sure. You know, we're um, all waiting for uh into the Spider-Verse, right? Or whatever the 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 new Spider, yeah. not that one, the, the one with the Toby. new one. The because it's clear they're going to do something because they've been like, "All right, we finished our end game. Now we just kind of been kicking along and then yeah. you know a quarantine happened and it's just like all right we're waiting to start like this phase four or whatever and you know yeah, they, that they're they... going to it's it's this cascading thing you got the doctor strange thing happening too so you know that there's reality bending stuff and it's bleeding into other uh you know mcus so mm-hmm. there's something's going to happen between those two movies that is going to jump start the new like right. phase, like in they terms really of plots. They movies. stuck the landing, and now they're off to a real shaky start for the next phase. It seems like, yeah, I just mean, because of the pandemic. Yeah, mainly. Uh, but yeah, it's like we've been waiting for so long about like what's your next thing though, right? Because you're clearly not done. You're Disney. You're gonna keep yeah. What's <laughs> squeezing this lemon? Yeah. Uh, what's your next Thanos? Yeah. And what's your next Thanos? I think they're. Uh, I. It's it's gonna really fizzle out if they feel obligated to keep doing that. You know what I mean? Where they're like, okay, another ten year plan, another Thanos, mm-hmm. and it's like, you know, maybe maybe switch it up, and maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, it's gonna it's it's going in a lot of weird directions, think, and it's hard to keep track. Because yeah. yeah, like Carnage and Venom and the symbiotes, it's like okay, so is this in that world too? Because it's not unbelievable in that world. Um, no, but not it's at all. just like God, so much more bullshit for them to have to worry about. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, just these more weird aliens. little slime monsters. It's just more aliens. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, it's just. But they've be yet alien. they've yet to take that plunge. They've yet to be like this is officially well, they got the in the Eternals MCU. coming up and stuff. I'm sure that's going to have something to do with something. Maybe right. not. I don't really know. Mm-hmm. I think here's what it, here's what it feels like to me is that Sony is more than happy to take characters from the MCU that they'll that marvel will give them and put them in their movies we haven't seen it oh no i was gonna say we haven't seen it go the other way but we absolutely have yeah have with spider man spider man that's yeah. the whole yeah. point of, and they they did renegotiate like that's why okay. we're get, that's why we're getting a third movie and then they also just reached a sizable agreement to have the spider-man movies uh be streaming on disney plus right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I think they're just. Are gonna, they gonna? Okay. I think it seems like they there was a hiccup after Far From Home came out, but now it's just two giant media conglomerates more than happy to continue helping each other yeah. make money. Yeah. And we're all happy for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just wondering. You guys like, want to make another billion dollars? Yes, yes, I do. 
there does seem to be a wall, right? Like, oh, maybe it's it's more that Spider Man hasn't shown up in these and the Venom and the Morbius. Yeah, there's weird. Like, there's or the X Men, the X Men yeah. and the uh, generic MCU, I guess at this point. Yeah. I wonder yep. if they're gonna create like pod universes. Don't know. For things know, man. to exist in. It's, it's gonna exhausting. be it's gonna be exhausting, man. As exhausting as the source material is, right? Yeah. Like, yeah, no, no, it's they true knew what the they're comics and that it's a we fucking knew. nightmare. Yeah, we knew what we're signing up for. Every Yeah. Uh, well, the point well, the, the point you get to in comics is you can't keep track of it all. So you just exactly. kind of find the stuff that you like and you follow that and then characters will, right. will pass through the various titles because they yeah. all exist in the same universe and like right. you have a passing familiarity. Like you don't really need like the there's a big Spider-Man crossover uh, and Captain America shows up to help you. You don't need to stop and explain to the person reading who Captain America is. They know. Yeah, and that's <laughs> yeah, an like unfortunate it's... aspect about the MCU is that because they're so large and scoping and they'll have to be, you know, they'll have to be only come out like one, a few a year. Uh, yeah. That means that the semi-permeable membrane that we usually have with comics where it's like, oh... There's a plot hole here, I guess, but whatever. You know, it's like, it's fine. It's just, you know, this story is nice and tight. But, it, yeah, it can't it can't interact with the fact that there's this whole thing that's happening in this other uh, quote-unquote timeline that's supposed to be happening here. Uh, and they created many, many Earths and stuff like that, which is a good way of getting out of that. Uh, the problem with the movies is that we won't have that blindness... Uh, because we'll ha- we'll be- we'll pick apart every little thing, because it's one continuous timeline so far. Right. It, that's the choice I'm, they made. I'm curious about this because, like you said, Tom, there are people who just watch who read certain comics. There aren't people who just watch like the Captain Americas, right? Um, I mean, the, I know the, plenty um, of people yeah. within our group of friends that don't yeah. watch a lot of Marvel movies. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not saying that certainly people who don't watch a lot of Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, are there people who are like, I'm just fans of this thread? Because yes, they're also I interconnected. Know someone like that who's just recently started watching Captain America. He had watched the Avengers. Like, like the, the, all three the three Avengers, Avengers movies? That's it. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Did they make sense? He was like, yeah, that's yeah, fine. Okay. Okay. The Avengers makes, yeah, that makes the most sense because that's supposed to be like their flagship where it's like, mm-hmm. I just couldn't, I couldn't imagine watching the Avengers movies and understanding every, you know, like Captain America's Civil War. Endgame would if be you don't tough. Watch, <laughs> if, yes, you, if you had it, seen you just, it. If you don't yes. watch well, like, no, it's but like, you like, know but that like, Black Panther exists. You know. It's no, not no, like but you like, avoided it. If you right. don't watch Civil he's, War, he's still you alive. don't understand why between Age of Ultron and Infinity War, suddenly everybody's like way different. You do kind of need to throw Civil War in there. Yeah. Like that, that should have been an Avengers movie. Uh, yeah, but yeah. it should have been. Um, no, it, it like kinda, they, they it, can't. It, that you kind of need to watch that after you Age can't of Ultron. Watch, you can't go from Iron Man two to Iron Man three and be like, "Wait, what's wrong with Tony? Why does he have PTSD? What wormhole? What the fuck are they talking about?" That's in the like, Avengers you have movie. To, yeah. You can't you just have to watch, watch the Avengers. Yeah, it, it's harder. Yeah. It's harder to just watch the spinoff series. Some of them anyway, right? Uh, mm-hmm. Because they ha- they reference like plot points and stuff, but most of the Avengers movies are. Yeah, like what Abe, like but they still, yeah, somebody they still walks in and you're like, well, I know who that is. Simple, yeah. But, yeah, no, not yeah. completely, but yeah. Yeah, it's. I, I mean, they, they, they do a good job of doing flashbacks and stuff too, but more or less, uh, right. I think most people watch almost all of them because they're the biggest say, movies they, of the year almost every yeah, time. The answer is to just watch all of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, but there are people who don't care about any of this, so... Yeah, and God, God bless those. God bless them. those kind folks. Mm-hmm. Eh, um, I mean, whatever. It's watch watch a movie <laughs> or don't. Like, no, I don't give a fuck. fuck. Them. Leave them. To, <laughs> like, <laughs> just leave honestly, them in the dust. honestly, yeah. watch the movies or don't. I would. I don't care. Yeah, I'm not gonna get uh, mad at anybody either the, way. That's the right. I'm opinion. not mad. I'm just. I'm glad that there's don't. people who can walk away from this spectacle because I can't look away. Yeah, just uh, so it's clear, everyone it's like have people Tom's who opinion. don't gamble. I'm like, bless your heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. I mean, who doesn't, who actually, what maniac actually thinks, like, you didn't watch all of them? 
fuck you. you know? yeah. Like, no, no. One, I just didn't no think it was. No one cares what other people are watching. Do we, yeah. people actually care? Some, no. Some I people. Mean, uh, <laughs> and most, and most, those people. I mean, we people also, we live in a dick. world where movies are more important mm-hmm. to us than the average yeah, person. that's fandom. That is that is true. I mean, yeah. I guess we get whenever that with sports. I, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Whenever I leave this bubble and like visit home or whatnot, people don't give a fuck about this shit. No. They'll watch. They'll watch a movie in passing. Uh, mm-hmm. They'll put it on for their kids or whatever. Uh, but no one's like paying attention to the this bullshit. <laughs> it's all bullshit. Not me, baby. Yeah. Let's talk about the next movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's move on. The Forever Purge. Um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is uh, the twist is just that they're doing it all the time now, right? The the twist is that there's no purge. It's, it's not a purge anymore. <laughs> it's just vomiting. It's just violence. It's just yeah. constant vomiting. It's just a post-apocalyptic movie. <laughs> so the first they should just call it violence. It's just yeah, it's just like world has gone insane. The first yeah. few shots of this trailer made be- made me believe that the animals were getting in on this purge. Oh, uh, that would be great because the, it's like shot of animal, shot of animal, and I'm like, and then now it's getting creepy music, and I was like, oh shit, the animal cut to the sh- like a shotgun, just a a goat with a shotgun. That's oh, the that movie I so wish good. this was, but instead, no. Yeah. Uh, do you think this movie's gonna have a stance on immigration? <laughs> and what do you think it is? <laughs> it might. Oh it boy, might. I hope. It, it definitely <laughs> will attempt to because Here's the th- oh, that's all yeah. we know about like the main characters really. This is the wildest thing I think about the purge is that the first purge is about it's about class. There's mm-hmm. a political mm-hmm. or social message in it. Right. And usually when a movie like this gets a bunch of sequels, the first thing they'll drop is like the message. Yeah, right? it'll just be like all the... It'll just... But the problem is that there's no iconography either. You don't have a, you know, Michael or a Jason, right? Right. No, no, but yeah, but there's still a purge. You know, there's still like, oh, That's people true. dressed up. You're not it's wrong. just wild to me that they constantly have maintained that it's also like political satire. Because they there's um, nothing else, man. This I is know, a but garbage much, franchise. Much like slasher films, the quality greatly drops <laughs> as you make a copy of a I, copy of a copy. See, I could think, to me, I thought they were going to go the other way. And it's kind of in my assumptions about the animals getting in on this. Uh, the way to go with this franchise is clearly just like, all right, let's have a meeting. Let's roll a deck types of purges. Let's get all the purges yeah. out and just do real small, like sub purges. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. These like different these countries, people. You different make areas. It the warriors. With their purging. <laughs> you should basically make it the warriors. Yeah. Like, cause this yeah. is a batshit insane premise that it, you're right. It should have been the warriors. Yeah. Or they should. But that's... They should like mix up genres. Like I, I, think, exactly. I think we've brought it oh, up yeah. before, where they sh- it should be like a couple of people who are trying to like do a robbery and they get caught up by like yeah, maniacs. yeah, that would be pretty cool too. Yeah, they get purged. Yeah. We we we've talked about this with other uh, film series. Like the Alien series, where it's like you didn't need to expand into the mythology, you just had you could have just kept telling stories about aliens, mm-hmm. us dealing like different characters dealing with aliens, yeah, or like the same with Predator, but they went into this big weird mythology, and then we get Prometheus. This is kind of the same because I know that as these Purge movies go on, they get into like the politics mm-hmm. and like oh, mm-hmm. it's actually really corrupt, and it's like we don't need to know what the government's up mm-hmm. to. In the purge universe, we we have we we know that it's bullshit. That's all we need to know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of so wanna, like yeah. I kind of want to get the genre movies, and I want to get like um, I want to get the, you know, Tom Clancy purge. You know. Oh yeah. I want to. I, I want a rom com <laughs> purge. Now Tom now we're Clancy purge. <laughs> yeah. We're Jack Ryan's like involved. Cold War dad porn bullshit. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but meanwhile. In the background, there's a purge. <laughs> Are you guys doing a purge back there? <laughs> I swear you guys better not be doing a purge. God. I haven't seen, I've only seen the first one of these, so I'm just so checked out. Of this yeah, I've, seen, I've seen two I've seen of them. a couple of the others, and the most surprising thing about some of the sequels is that they're not terrible. Mm. They're actually, mm-hmm. there's actually, they're actually kind sense. of okay. Because they take risks. 
So yeah. they actually like ha- get a director or a writer that is like, I'm going to fuck with it. I didn't see the newest one that was just, again, it went, it got so bad where they were like, it was just like mirroring our politics, mm-hmm. but purge. Mm-hmm. And it was like, ah, oh, Christ, you guys, I am so sick of your purge bullshit. Yeah, get the <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> What I, was it? Anarchy or no election uh, year? Uh, I didn't watch that one. I watched the like first Christ. purge. Wasn't there a first purge? There was. There's yeah. the first purge. There's the also purge like I didn't watch that one. Purge There's also so have... two seasons of a TV series. No Christ. No, that yeah. couldn't have sn- snuck. How by much me. can you do on the purge? I will say, have they ever done? And this is kind of what the forever purges, but of course they have to purge. Yeah. Uh, like it, they should do it on the TV show. I, I think we've talked about this. I'd be so much more interested in the non-purge days. Like there's yeah. gotta be so that's gotta <laughs> you can get a lot of like cool what drama made, out of what that. made this possible. And like, like the idea of neighbors games. living near each other, even though one of them like mm-hmm. killed the friend of another one or mm-hmm. something. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I and I also in general like. The Forever Purge Man, like they they're choosing to pivot the franchise with in a world where the thing that makes it a purge is no longer true. Uh, the Forever Purge. It's just like just a violence. weird, yeah. It's just a weird way to go. I can't say I'm for it, but Look, you know this what? It's like the seventh purge. It's fine There's because <laughs> they know they know the uh, their audience at this point. They know yeah. it's like you you're gonna get in here and see like a bunch of people killing each other. That's what yeah. you're going to get, baby. Abe, imagine you're in a purge pitch meeting mm-hmm. and you're throwing out ideas and they keep just like stonewalling you with, yeah, we made that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> made that one too. I, yeah. no, oh, that's we did episode that purge. three of, this, of this, the like, purge God show. Damn, we you did all yeah. of the purges. <laughs> you'd be like, I don't know, forever purge? And they're yeah. like, ooh, ooh, we like go it. Go on. Go, it's like not even a purge. Not an instantaneous yeah. thing. Just <laughs> constantly <laughs> purging. Yeah. They're like, uh, we'll buy it. Here's a million dollars. God, I love this meeting. <laughs> One million. Enjoy a million dollars. No, no more. No it's time. less. Let that us is all exactly get drunk and how purge. purge movies are made. <laughs> and then they just throw a rager where there's a small yeah. purge at the party. Yeah. God, I love it. I love it. I love this version mm-hmm. of how the purges mm-hmm. are made. I'm both main character and director. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other thoughts about the Forever Purge? Nope. No, we can get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, this next one is for the protege. Mm-hmm. This is um, Martin Campbell, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, that was the... <laughs> and that that doesn't land until like halfway through the trailer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And for people really don't like, know... That's... I was like Sorry. watching it like I don't care about any of this. And then they're like from the director of Casino Royale. I was like, oh. Mm-hmm. And then Michael mm-hmm. Keaton shows up. And I was like, all right. Yeah. No, oh, and Maggie Q. Yeah, Maggie, Maggie Q's been in some crap, though, so it's like it just kind of yeah, looked like... Yeah, that's fair. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, so yeah, Ma- and it's Samuel Jackson. Every, yeah. Right, it's it's Maggie Q and Sam Jackson, and their participation in a movie is like no indication of its quality. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I'm looking Campbell's at also been, further... He's also, I mean, dr- yeah, you're right, Casino Rail, GoldenEye, Zorro's, uh, also Green Lantern. Also Green Lantern. So, also yeah. Green Lantern. Not so perfect for um, so they hid something from us. I just clicked on the IMDb for this movie. Mm-hmm. You know who else is in this? Mm-mm. Who? Robert Patrick. Oh playing shit! A character, playing a character named Billy Boy. <laughs> uh, so fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm into yeah. this. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I will say. Oh, let's see. What did the writer do? The writer did the Equalizers. All right, uh, those are fine. And the the Mechanic sixteen blocks. Mm. Jack Reacher, Magnificent Seven remake. Mm. You yeah. know, this a lot is of Antoine Fuqua uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's it's seeming more generic as it goes on. Yeah, the thing that popped out is the fucking opening. It it just clicked into me that you really can't survive a drop just by holding onto a rope Mm-mm. while you fall. Mm-mm. But no, movies that's... seem to think that happens all <laughs> that's, the time. That's yeah. why bungee cords are a thing. Yeah. yeah. That happens in all the movies, doesn't You'd rip it? Your we arms just do off that. If you had the strength, which you don't. Yeah. So or you just, just let slide. go of the rope. Yeah, dude. that's what it would, would snap happen. tight. I, you'd let go and you'd continue to fall. This, regardless, this trailer is, and I think I said this before on this particular uh, program. I hate trailers so much. Uh, yeah. This one is like has one of 
probably the most for unforgivable sin of any trailer, which is they didn't even reorder. Like we're now in a post world, like post trailer world where they give away all the things. That's not even what I'm mad at. It's that they don't right. even reorder the beats for this trailer. Like it's basically chronological. Mm-hmm. Like you see act one play out, you see act two play out and you see act three play out. So it's just like, why would I go see this movie at this point? I know it's going to be just because of the John wick stuff. Like that's what it feels like. Mm-hmm. Like, but good cool stunts. Yeah. Samuel Jackson. We haven't really mentioned, uh, I assume, super dies. Yeah, he gets super dies, and I like it's murdered clear what really a, a hardcore. Yeah, they killed trailer. Maggie Hughes, Samuel L. Jackson, and so now he's got to mur- she's got to murder everyone. That's what this movie is, and at the end, the boss is Michael Keaton. Got mm-hmm. it. Yep. Okay, and yeah, he's yeah, gonna die, he's, and they literally throw, see her throw him into his desk, like, and he's alone and bloodied, and like everything is just very, very clear. We need to. I think what's happening is like an executive is sitting down and they're like, I want something fresh. I don't want just another like dead wife revenge movie. And Mm -hmm. so then someone pitches them like something really out there and they're like, "Mm, let's just make the wife Samuel L. Jackson. Okay. Like they don't, they don't want it to be that different. They don't want it to be that different. Yeah. Right. The, the they killed my blank, right? And you now just, I will kill them all. Yeah, is God mm-hmm. damn it! That's there's so many of those. Mm-hmm. When we were writing the uh, the first draft uncredited <laughs> for Force of mm-hmm. Nature, that was very <laughs> clearly what they wanted. I can't speak mm-hmm. to legally, literally. I can't speak to anything else, but I can't right. speak to the fact that. What they are shopping, we're friends. Well, <laughs> they're shopping for specifically things that are like, all right, can we get like, can you literally get a like a Mel Gibson or like a Bruce Willis like role in there that's the main character, but the page count is this because they can only they're they will only agree to these kinds of things. We can only right. agree for this budget. Uh, you know, we will only be able because if they're in the whole movie, then we're going to be paying double for them. Right. So we wanted to get them in like in and out in like two weeks, you know, basically is the idea. And it's just like, oh, okay. so that's a huge limitation is your main character uh, needs all their scenes need to be shot very quickly. Um, And it's just like, okay, so there's like a lot. They have literally like a list of like, here's the things we're looking for, which just makes all of these things look exactly identical. It's like making a suburb, you know, everyone wants a garage. Okay, so you got to figure out a garage. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like building a target. Yeah. Everything has to look the same. It's Mm -hmm. going to have the the same recognizable beats. Right. And the things that pop out are stuff like the name Martin Campbell. Like the fact that Martin Campbell's name is on this makes me think, oh, this might this all right. It's what you said because speaking of Mel Gibson, he also directed Edge of Darkness, mm-hmm. which is a very generic film. Yep, it's um, yeah. and so uh, there's just that idea of like, which one is this for him? Is he just is he just making a buck, um, or is this does this does he give a shit? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you what I think. <laughs> so, but that's mm-hmm. yeah, that's. That is what they're gambling on. They're just saying we're going to it's producer made movies. It's like they're at, you know, the Cannes Festival or whatever. And they're like, OK, we can get this person, and this person starring. And we're thinking this director and it's like, OK, then I'm going to get more get you more money to get Martin Campbell or something like that or get you more money right. to get Samuel L. Jackson. You know, like that's how the movie is made is by the star power, which they're not wrong about. I'm just pointing out that's how films sometimes are made. And -hmm. it's usually the producer route. It's not like, oh, this director's hot right now. What do you project? Do you want to work on Jordan Peele or something like that? Um, It's very different way of making a movie. Mm -hmm. But hey, they got Robert Patrick. Yeah. Yeah, again, so you know, cool. you want to you want to get a name that's going to put butts in seats. So yeah, yeah exactly. Something for that. everybody, I guess. Yeah. R. Patrick. <laughs> I'm um, I'm happy to move on. I can I can yeah, feel it. Yeah, let's move on. Yeah. I'm probably going to watch this. Good. Um, enjoy it. All I, right. I hope you enjoy next it. Th- 
Thank you. Next thing I'm probably going to watch is Stillwater. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> redneck Matt Damon solving murders. Good lord! I'm so they excited. Tried to solving a murder like his 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 daughter, um, uh, Little Miss Sunshine. They gets put her in caught jail. Up. They put her yeah. in. It, she's she gets broke down, palaced. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> Little Miss Sunshine in jail. Oh, <laughs> so excited! You know, Revenge Dad is a genre I'm pretty done with. Oh yeah, yeah. It's very amazing. Yeah, but this this is like here's all right. The fact that it's the fucking writer director of Spotlight that um, blew and the my station mind. agent because I totally um, did not know what to expect. Here's my here's my guess because they haven't made they've made weird movies. Um, uh, 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 Tom McCarthy. Uh, so I'm guessing this is not like. Revenge Dad. I'm guessing you can't just put Liam Neeson in this role. I don't think it's like the previous. I think this is probably like a movie, right? <laughs> what do you like mean? Like that, like where like shit goes down, and it's and it's they they clearly That's... like advertised it like this because this was the easiest way to advertise it. But I'm guessing there's more to this movie. You think that they're holding? They're they're pulling the this punches. Is like, in this isn't the like trailer. an action thriller. Oh no, he, he gets. Yeah, he gets his ass kicked in a parking lot. Um, <laughs> right. Which is, um, more, I howled more, with laughter. More of these dad revenge movies need right. to have that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah. This is like a realistic dad revenge right. movie. It's, yeah, it's like the Logan. <laughs> yeah, I, I want like taken. in the third act him to just have a heart attack. Right. Uh, <laughs> just strokes <Yeah>. out. <laughs> just strokes. After they, getting his ass savagely that, beaten. <laughs> Jesus, that might not because they were doing a lot of shots of like if he's at fast food. They did so much. Yeah. They did so much like markings. They li leave little marks of like, oh, he's he loves America. Shot of the flag. Yeah. Loves Mickey D's baby. You know, like we right. we need to make you know that this and guy. And then he he straight up has a line in the trailer where he says, uh, where she's like, "You sound American." He's like, "I am." Oh, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, he's a good old boy. They're yeah. doing real American Towers. bullshit here. Yeah. He's also buying her the worst necklace ever. It is a shitty <laughs> necklace. It's kind of shitty, yeah. Though I feel silver for that. necklace, this is still water. I feel for um, that. My hick roots, I feel for this necklace, though. That's, yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, no, really. Because, like, all right, so I grew up in a, uh, a small town. I mean, it's not so small anymore because the dot-com you know boom of that age right. but like it started off there and uh it's just but it was a bunch of uh it was morgan hill california and it was uh it was next to like all these little shitty rural suburbs that were like lower income and one of them was uh hollister <laughs> and it, boy was i surprised when i entered like uh high school and uh college that, that was like a name brand for like a high like fashion brand so like Stillwater, which makes a lot of sense why would they why would they make that necklace what is that necklace supposed to be like i don't right it's unfathomable to me it's because it might be because of the uh like rich poor divide like rich people coming into towns and going like look at that that's like small town i think right. that that's actually you know this is a this is a necklace or this is a brand now and it's just like oh you don't actually you didn't go to that city at all did you you don't <laughs> so that's my guess is what that might entail is that he's going to learn more things about the uh necklace or it's just a fucking necklace i don't know but that would be really weird because yeah I don't know, like man. you said the necklace is stupid they gave it uh, space in the trailer, which is a real weird thing. I guess they wanted yeah. us to know why it was I, called Stillwater. Yeah, I think so too. I think they were like, "Why is it called Stillwater?" Why is it called Stillwater? That's the town he's from, right? Um, I doubt the town of Stillwater is going to be in the movie much. No, um, it's going to be I a concept. <laughs> at the end, he like gives her the necklace, or he has the necklace on. Him I hope throughout. it's not just that man, where it's like, oh, the name of the movie, and like. What it represents is like coming also, back home. She drowned. The, the she she's accused of murdering her girlfriend, the daughter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in water. It's like still water. Oh yeah, that's true and stupid. Still I hate no. it. Maybe that's all still it is. Still water. Then. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I love seeing fucking. I want to see Larry the Cable Guy fucking bumble mm. around Europe. Like I love this fucking crocodile Dundee shit. Mm -hmm. uh, fish out of water. Like I'm glad he's like a like a. He's from Oklahoma. He's an oil worker. I just read. Right. 
Yep. He's like, uh, uh yeah. It's like Deep Water he's... Horizon. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like the idea. I like the idea of taking this like guy who's clearly this? like the. I think the idea is he's never really left the country. Um, he's in. He's a fish out of water. Why isn't this? They should Mark have a whole. Wahlberg. They better have a whole Dundee montage. Does anyone right? know why what? this isn't Mark Wahlberg? I have no um, idea. Probably because the. I'm guessing that the daughter, since she's a uh, lesbian, Mark Wahlberg was like, "I'm sorry, me and Jesus, <laughs> we have a problem with that." <laughs> and they couldn't get him. Uh, I can't but, have that kind of blowback hit Wahlburgers. Yeah, yeah, Wahlburg. yeah, exactly. Man, these movies, they really know how to hide toxic mas- masculinity with yeah. like, oh, they sure the did. veil of like love for country or daughter or whatever. Yeah. Well, that's that was what All right, that was my impression watching this trailer is I get the I get the fish out of water um I can already see the producer note where the script came in and it was about the girl like the the teen the or the twenty something year old woman. Like the script before um, it was. And they were like, Oh, what about this dad character? <laughs> yeah, can we, we could we probably get Matt Damon for him. Let's hey, let's swap the focus. Like because mm. it's like, yeah, I don't give a shit about her dad. Like she's the one in jail for murder. Yeah. Uh, um, that's wild. I don't know. I don't know. But maybe this film maybe, fucking out of its mind, though. Maybe it's maybe, like old boy. Maybe it is <laughs> we don't out know. of its mind. <laughs> I hope so. I don't think that the trailer... The trailer made me think it's not out of its mind, is my take. I'm I'm guessing it's... Because um, he's he's definitely nailing that lady. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing it's going to be something where it's like... Stillwater uh, represents home. He's trying to get his daughter home, right? He gets involved with this French lady and her daughter. And like... Um, he starts kind of building a life there. I'm just going to predict the movie. Okay. Um, we learn that his daughter, there's all that thriller shit. Mm-hmm. Um, ultimately, I feel like her daughter totally did it. His daughter. <laughs> yeah, totally um, did it. <laughs> she totally did it. And the movie ends with him like visiting her in prison and just like living in this European town and having a great time. Having a great time. <laughs> he has that new eight-year-old, the woman's daughter. Mm-hmm. He's like, you're... You're new. You're new. Daughter. You're new, Miss Sunshine. I'm gonna Sunshine. name you after her. I'm gonna change your name. I. That sounds about right. That sounds right. like okay. I would have a little different, little key differences, but more or less, you got the broad strokes. I'd say that that's probably what it is. Yeah. All right. Let's but move we'll on. See. All right. We'll see. Stillwater. Right. We'll see. This next year, we have a lot of trailers. This is solos. As in, like, Han Solo, but multiple. multiple. Not Solo. That's right. Multiple Solos. I just got that now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Helen Mirren in space, baby. Hell yeah. Yeah, that's all I want. That's all I want. Like, receiving... Like, it's a bunch of people doing, like, their... I don't know, Juilliard acting monologues? Yeah, it really <laughs> yeah. feels like... The I, the concept of this, if you haven't seen the trailer yet, is it says eight inspiring stories, one profound connection. So they're yeah. cloud atlasing the shit out of this right now. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. clear it's like vignettes, kind of like... It feels kind of Black Mirror-esque in that some of them involve technology. Um, but it's like three unique vignettes that follow right. one character, but somehow they're connected uh you know we love that when films do that right it's one of those fucking it's one of those fucking um uh uh posters where it's a bunch of squares with the actors faces on them yeah and you're like oh god they want awards but they're not gonna get any awards uh, (laughs) like i've never seen a poster like that for a movie that wins an award yeah they're all yeah it looks how do you I don't know why they they take it because I think they like the story and they knew that they only had to be there for so long and they'll get the money. Like all Here's their my money guess. is going to those actors. So, yeah. Here's my guess. Um, we're rock hard for exploring space right now. Mm-hmm. We did that other Mars show that's canceled. Mm-hmm. Um, we have like the stowaway one that I'm sure will get canceled. Oh, that's a um, movie. Oh, okay. Hollywood Hollywood is really into the exploring Mars. I don't know if people are. Like humans, probably uh, less watching so. these things. I'd say less so. But yeah. I'm guessing. Unfortunately, this is a sci-fi. This is my. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna guess. This is them. It's about the first people colonizing space, and maybe they're very lonely, and there's some sort of like 
way for them to be able to communicate with each other. I think they're all dead in their memories talking to each other or something. Oh, that's disgusting. I yeah, I think that's what it is. I think Helen Mirren is just like we, we reached the singularity where everybody can upload their consciousnesses. Mm-hmm. And oh, I think that's just yeah. what she's doing. You think so? And she's mm-hmm. about I, to go into like that. That's her thing. She's now going to they've taken her out the pasture. Uh, or something like that you know they'll flip it somehow but like yeah it's one profound connection it's probably death you know yeah well Uh, all right well this it's got a great cast but um mm -hmm. i just looked up who's directing episodes uh would you believe one of the directors is zach braff oh that's Mm. too bad (laughs) (laughs) i bet i bet he's the dan stevens one oh no (laughs) Fucking Dan Stevens. He's, ah, God. Someone give him, like, other things. (laughs) Yeah. He's, uh, he picks some great ones and some not so great ones. Yeah. Uh, But he's still really good. That's movies. That's, that's movies. He's still really good, though. Um, I like, I just like this, uh, uh, shotgun to the face marketing model. And we're doing it with art house films we have for a while, you know. We just cut to the chase now, come to the movie trough, dig right in on this Oscar bait. You know? Oh, yeah. Put your nose right <laughs> in it. <laughs> it's like, they don't, they, it's almost a dis, it would be a disrespect to the audience, the way they market this, if they weren't right. Like, this yeah. is, they know, all right, is that what you're into? Well, that's what that movie's for. I hate this, though. Like, this repelled me. It did, There's, yeah. like, just in the marketing, because there's, like, yeah, fucking Morgan Freeman's showing up, Helen Mirren. Uh, right. Anthony Mackie. It's got it's got a great cast. But it's sci-fi. That's mm. that's my jam. And they made it. They just slathered on this sap in the trailer, and they're like, it. it they really wanted me to know how deep it was going to be and how heartfelt. And it was like you were repelling me. Yeah. You're repelling me. And you 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 have all the right things. Mm-hmm. All the right things. And then they we put, gave like, you the, all of the clues. Yeah. They put the, uh, what is it, like the Walter Mitty song on it? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Ah. It's real yeah. fucking Mitty. Oh, yeah, that, that's what it is. That of Monsters and Men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I hit that song. Just so angry that a movie is trying to make you feel something. <laughs> Like a cat <laughs> doesn't want to yeah. get doesn't want to come out from under the car. That's me, baby. Oh, ah, let's move I read on. The, I just want to say the first line of the premise is the series ponders what it means to be human. All right, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> All right, let's go to fucking Lysi's story. Stephen King. Yeah, man. St- Stephen King. Yeah. Stephen. And a, and a rare story about an author. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Featuring a rare performance uh, of Dane DeHaan as a psychopath. Yeah. 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 Hey. Um, this, I mean, I, all right. Every day I get closer to getting Apple TV. Every day. It's... Uh, it's kind of good. Like it's kind of good. They have a few good ones. <laughs> they got some good ones. They got some good yeah. ones. No, no, I they bet have, they do. The best show of last year. Uh, but they also. I'm trying to make it through uh, for all mankind, and that's not bad. That's the Ronald Here's, Moore bit. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, Ronald Moore. Yeah. Yeah. Here's what got me rock hard, is I miss Clive Owen. I was. I love Children of Men. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love Inside Man. Clive Owen. He was. He was. He was my best boy, my best boy in the world. <laughs> right. And then he had to be taken away by the Nick or some bullshit. Mm-hmm. And I haven't seen him. And then and then here he is with fucking Julianne Moore, You're who's not gonna, also in fucking Children of Men. You're yeah. not going to see uh, much of him, it seems, in this I movie. I think there's going to be a lot You're of- You're going to see a lot of him in flashback, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then we got Joan Allen right there. Are mm-hmm. you fucking kidding me? Mm-hmm. This- I like how angry you are that- uh, Clive Owen briefly vanished from films to make a show with Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> You're just uh, so offended by it. Right. Bullshit. <laughs> give me Inside Man 2. I don't give a shit. <laughs> You're like, why you go off and do the thing that's probably satisfying to you yeah. as an actor? Come back. Come why back. Why you go to do the cool shit. period drama with Soderbergh? Shoot him up me. again. Look Shoot at what he's done up. recently, though. <laughs> Fucking Gemini, Gemini man. man, yeah. <laughs> Valerian in the City of a Thousand Planets. Come on, Anon. 
Do some good movies. Oh man, Clive. you Anon. just want everyone He's to be Will such Smith. Such good movies. You just want everyone to be Will Smith, don't you? Yeah, sure. Just like just do just do the one, do the what you, you what makes sense for you to do. <laughs> do more I robots. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at his shit. I forgot that he's going to be an impeachment American crime story as Bill Clinton. Holy that is shit! Amazing yeah. casting, the, actually. Uh, yeah, the uh, they released set photos a little bit ago of uh, Sarah Paulson as Linda Tripp and Ryan Murphy needs to stop. Yeah, <laughs> well, isn't, isn't that one Ryan that Lewinsky Murphy. is actually uh, consulting on? Oh yeah, no, I mean yeah. For sure, so I'm just that's I'm, something. I'm talking yes. about he's he's obsessed with Sarah Paulson, which of course, oh yeah. Uh, but it's like I don't know what did we really In, need to put? I don't know. There's something about. Just, I get the overall sentiment that Ryan Murphy needs to be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm, but, I'm for that. I can't put my finger on why. I think it might be just jealousy that he's just he won't stop making things, mm-hmm. and he's very fast. He's extremely and, prolific, yeah. Yeah, and it's like, calm, I think Ryan, I calm think, down. I think stop he's, it. I think Go he's fast. the only person so far who's gotten one of those big streaming deals. Uh, yeah, from he just a, keeps from, getting them, and is just yeah. like actually producing on it. Right, like everybody else has been like a real slow trickle, and Ryan Murphy's like, you want some fucking shows? Yeah, yeah. he's just full of ideas. Uh, like. I Ryan Murphy tried to get into the what is it what is it how do you say it is it ratchet or is ratchet. it ra- ratchet it's ratchet. ratchet yeah uh about nurse ratchet <laughs> I uh no yeah, yeah no well, I that's the thing. well I saw all the trailers to that show and just like comparing it to one floor of the cuckoo's nest i was like boy you watched this movie and completely misunderstood it yeah yeah, yeah. and also just like I feel like you're going to try to do something with the slow burn of it all uh really bad in terms of slow burn yeah. not we are now not doing the slow burn well uh for tv we've really gotten into this phase <laughs> where we just have decided it's okay to be slow and doesn't matter is right, more it's okay if the, nothing happens that's not for slow a burn i gotta i gotta redirect us back toward actually toward Actually, towards Lysi's story. <laughs> sure. God damn it. All right. One last thing, though. Ryan Murphy probably, uh, if there's anybody who has a genie lamp, it's Ryan Murphy. Probably. All right. He just produces, man. I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> He's, um, yeah, anyway. This is J.J. Abrams, which that's a shame. Yeah. Um, but maybe I, I could almost see him complimenting uh, Stephen King. Almost. Well, he's see only, that I, out. He's producing it. He's so producing, it's less yeah. like he had like he also produced Lovecraft Country and I liked most of that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he's he's, he's he produced likes, stuff that's not garbage. Yeah. It's just Stephen King is right is he has the credit for writing this series. It's a novel. Which is interesting. No, no, he's got credit for the novel and Oh, okay. He must have done the, the scripts then, yeah. This mini series, oh. which is scary. That's not typical for Stephen King. Not usually. Yeah. He did the last episode of the recent Stand miniseries yeah. as well. Which is yeah, okay. but he, yeah, he decision. usually doesn't write the, the scripts. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> There's a pretty good reason for that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he... <sighs> He likes a certain thing, and I don't know. It's I have a copy of uh, Silver Bullet, which is the screenplay mm-hmm. based on Cycle of the Werewolf, um, and it's it reads like schlock horror written by um, Shane Black, right? Hmm, that checks out. So right. you know, not bad, but he has a very specific idea in his head right. when he writes a screenplay, right? Because that's what he's used to. So right, he's used to being completely in control. Yeah, and yeah. having to provide everything, like the tone, the setting, the mood. Like he has to. Right. So he puts all that in a screenplay. It's like you don't really need all of this, man. <laughs> like, right, yeah. right. Bullet points, kind yeah. of. But it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, bullet I don't know. This still points, looks awesome. Huh? Uh, it's about a bull hunt. A bull hunt. Yeah. No. It's or it's 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 about bull Julianne hunt. Moore. Her husband Clive Owen is an author. He dies. Um, but. He seemed to get his ideas from visiting a place. So he would go into a trance-like right. state, 
uh, some super fan shows up demanding that she release his papers and notes and unfinished books. She says no, so he hires Tane Dahan to mm. gaslight, terrorize, and otherwise steal them from her. Do some yo-yoing. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yo-yoing and, and a fucking um, fishing jacket. Yeah. We know we know from uh, National Treasure, people love riddles. They do. Yes, absolutely. So I don't even need this movie to be spooky, but I also get I'm getting that. So this is great. I'm pretty excited. Just for yeah, the fucking riddles. Just the riddles in the cast. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like a good Stephen King adaptation, particularly stories that haven't been adapted yet, and this mm-hmm. hasn't. Another right. particular gripe with this trailer. She says not once, but twice, Julianne Moore. Uh, like, basically, the line, this better not all be in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just like, come on. Come on. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it, trailer. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I don't think that's ever been the case in a Stephen King story. It's but never we'll been, uh, but they threaten it. And yeah. I don't like the yeah. threat because <laughs> it means wait well, that it's all in their head. I don't know. No, she, he just, never... she just talks about how she says like I I can't tell there's... if I'm this is real or not is one time one thing that there, she says. There's definitely a movie uh, that fucking um, I don't want to say it because it's yeah, no, it technically spoil spoils it. the movie. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah kind of, sort of. Mm-hmm. You're talking about yeah. the, you're talking about the David Kep one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that just spoiled it. You just spoiled well, it. Well, they have to go. They, they have to go have the to go extra go. mile to do the yep. research. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Unless they're just a cap. Unless head. they just a cap, <laughs> big cap head. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's some cap. We got some cap heads out Unless there. Unless David Where cap, cap is that? listening, in which yeah. case I've he's just like, spoiled his movie for him. He's like, no, yeah, 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 that's Tom. True. God damn, damn it. it! I don't know why he's Richard Dreyfuss. I wrote Jurassic Park. <laughs> he's been known to say. Son of a darn. <laughs> All right. Heck of a gosh. Of <laughs> Heck of a gosh. He just won't swear, dude. David Kepp. No. Um, next, next trailer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Heels. 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 I'm actually, Heels. I've been excited for this show since the, I heard well, about it. I just looked up who's fucking running this show. It's, who created it? It's somebody. I forget who. Michael Waldron, who is a Rick and Morty writer. He also wrote um, Loki. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. He also wrote, wrote on Harmon Quest. He was an assistant on Community, so he grew up in the like the. Yeah. He, he went up in the Dan Harmon shit. Channel He's doing um, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. There yeah. it is. It's all. He's writing that as well. It's going well. And he's an executive producer and all this stuff. Uh, yeah, this is about wrestlers. Yeah, I believe yeah. the logline of this movie is more or less, from what I understand, just an out of his lu- out of luck, never do well wrestles his family. Is this? It's- it's he and his brother decide to become pro wrestlers and mm-hmm. they decided specifically to be villains, which are heels. heels That's what the, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's it. It's kind of, yeah, did you guys good. watch fighting with my family? I've wa- no. I watched half of it on like, you didn't an like airpl- it? no, it was like, uh, it was either on an airplane or it was uh, like, I had to, I had to stop halfway through. I didn't right. like turn it off cause I, I wasn't like into that it. Movie. I was I enjoying it. it, yeah, it way was... more than I expected to. Yeah, I had exactly. no idea yeah. fucking Stephen Merchant directed it. Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, that's wild. I didn't know that either. Yeah, like makes you want to watch it more. And The Rock <laughs> yeah. is like The Rock produced it and is in it. Yeah, and it's Florence Pugh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She that's, kills it. That's hot. Yeah. It's Buck Wild. Shit. Vince Vaughn plays the WWE trainer. It's, <laughs> Jesus Christ. It is, a, it is a wild film. Her parents are played by uh, Nick, Nick Frost, Frost and, and Lena Headey. Yeah. Oh fuck me! Mm-hmm. It's great. It's it's, <laughs> movie it's is a out solid of control. movie. Yeah. yeah. Every scene is like, oh, well, at least this is captivating, even if <laughs> I don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, as far as I can tell, that's all. That's like the logline of the show is just like two brothers go into professional wrestling after, two like brothers. Abe said, being ne'er do wells from all their lives. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, I you know not a, never had a wrestling phase. This is gonna be fun. Oh, it's a, and it's also it's a Arrow, uh, mm-hmm. Stephen Amel. Sure, I get him and his he, like. It's Stephen Amel and Robbie Amel. One of them's Green Arrow. The other one's on the Greg Daniels Afterlife show on Amazon. Right. Mm-hmm. One of them, one of them's Arrow. Was, one of them plays the the crazy jock and the babysitter. Okay. Yeah, who was um uh, Alexander something? He's he was in Vikings. He was the son of 
Ragnar Lothbrook. Very good. Uh, hmm. He also went to USC when I went to USC. I oh. saw him once walking around campus. Oh, chill. Like, you are famous. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so that's going to be pretty good. I'm getting also Warrior vibes. Warrior as in, like, the Tom yeah, Hardy the deal. Yeah, Tom deal. Hardy, Joel Edgerton. It's, that, one's like, that one's, like, dark. That's dark. This is going to be less dark, but it's going to try to mine the fan. Yeah, like this one. Lot. It feels a little dark, but yeah, not as yeah. dark as Warrior. And then, yeah, I see in Dave's notes, they're totally Frank Sabatka's in there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, Frank Sabatka. Oh, yeah. He pops right in there for one second. He's getting, he's getting rolls, as fuck. baby. He's getting rolls. Yeah. Oh, Frank. Yeah. Fucking they, Frank like, flash Sabatka. Him in. He's, he's getting all those Apple Plus shows, dude. Yeah, or, he is. Whatever. Apple, Frank Apple, Apple, Apple Plus. Is that it? Is that, what is it? Yeah, this, is, this is Stars. Yeah. Oh, okay. Frank Sabatka, he's got um I don't I'm never gonna learn the actor's name. You know, remember that actor that looks like a giant baby? Yes. Michael Chiklis. No. No, he's in no. an episode of the X Files. Well, again. Yeah, and Murder at Sixteen Hundred, he's the Secret Service guy. He looks like a giant baby. You'd know him if you saw okay. him. Frank Sabaka, he looks like a giant toddler. <laughs> like, not he a sure baby. Does. He sure does. He looks like, he's, like uh, maybe he's a grown, grown, grown into his face more, but not completely. Yeah. Like, <laughs> kind of confused. Yeah, starting to, he always looks a little starting grumpy. Starting to work He's the, like the face muscles. Yeah. Like He's emotions so, oh, starting. He's so grumpy, Frank. Yeah. Emotions are starting to like kind of blurt out like he's trying to yeah. run for size. Like yeah. anger. He's got a lot on his mind, Dave. Be- I gotta make a, be- between the I, union I and Ziggy. <laughs> yeah, I need a movie where you have a fucking giant baby and they play giant baby. Ziggy. They play the giant baby and a giant toddler. Like you give him a little I rattle. That. Yeah. Little bit. Just they old, get a rattle. Old baby and old toddler. Yeah. Old Fuck yeah. So that's what we call it. Old baby versus old yeah. toddler. Old ver- it's a versus. They're fighting. Well, I know who's going to win. They're like grumpy Toddler's old gonna... men's uh, versus. Yeah. You... Yeah. Toddler's going to win 100%. Yeah. It yeah. could toddler. be like an alien v pres- predator thing. The toddler is more powerful than the baby. More powerful. Actually might even have possibly uh, walk ability. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um final trailer sure yeah now that we're an hour into this show yeah it's the green knight yes of course it is finally <laughs> yeah mm. i have the role-playing game for this you do that's right you went and bought it I, i've never opened it um this is wait the, what the fucking they made a role-playing game for they, this? they did as a promo and then it didn't come out because of the fucking pandemic this is insane i didn't know this yeah. a24 loves weird merch They've done weird merch okay, before. Okay, cool. Yeah, and they it's, it's really like cool. That. It's, like, really stylized in the old, yeah. like, first run of Dungeons & Dragons. Like, that's what yeah. it looks like. Yeah, I do like. like that. And I like that they verified, just because, just so everyone knew, uh, it was very, it was, I was very worried for the whole time that they were just like, this is just, like, a Green Knight. No, no, it's the Green Knight from Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, mm-hmm. the English poem written in Middle English. Uh, yeah. That... Lo- just so so relieved that I know this that now. F- <laughs> fucking oh, yeah. wild. Oh, it looks so good. Uh, it's what? David Lowry Lowry is mm-hmm. the director. Um, who he has a really big he he's he did the fucking uh, Pete's Dragon movie. He did, yeah. But he also did um uh uh what is it? He did a Ghost Story, Eight Them Bodies Saints. Unfor- uh, the old man in the gun. Unfor- unfortunately, his muse is Casey Affleck, mm-hmm. uh, and that's a real shame. That's weird. But did you, have you guys seen any of those movies? I can't, no, I can't say I have. A Ghost Story, I think, is actually a good movie. It's pretentious as all hell, mm-hmm. uh, and it features Casey Affleck. Right. Luckily, they cover him with a sheet for most of the movie, so you forget. Right. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's dead. He's a ghost. Yeah, he's dead. Um, but it's a surprisingly good movie for a movie about a guy with a bed sheet over his head who plays a ghost. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I, uh, my point being, I'm glad that Casey Affleck isn't anywhere in this movie, <laughs> from what I can tell. <laughs> you know, I, I do have probably a, you'll an opinion you find undesirable. <laughs> I don't understand. I, I'm not... I don't dislike. I just don't understand the incredible hype of this movie. Neither. I was just about to talk about about that. Okay, I cool. don't get it either. You're with but me. It's very are, imaginative. There's a lot of things it's doing. It's right. Oh yeah, no, nothing about totally this. Totally like, I am. I know why I am excited for this movie because it, you know, it looks 
amazing. It's a cool dark fantasy movie. I like Dev Patel. It just looks cool, and it's a story that doesn't get adapted a lot. I think that's it. Yeah, it's just crazy that um, it's a weird... It's a weird story, first off, like the source material. The other thing is that it uh, no one knows about that. Uh, it's yeah, no it's different to me story. than like a Midsummer. You know, that has, in the trailer, even before, like it had like iconography and visuals that were like, oh shit, that looks creepy and awesome. Uh, this is a little bit more of that, but I don't remember everyone going like, Midsummer, baby. Oh, Here's what I think. Yeah, there was. Yeah, really? not, I think not not quite as mainstream as right, this has right. been, but that's crazy. I'm yeah, I think there's the not bubble. hype for this as much as there's hype for A24. Yeah, I think A24 We're, has officially yeah. grown so much hype. They did fucking, uh, I mean, Minari, um, Saint Maud. They did fucking uncut gems. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fucking they the really Lighthouse. had a good last two years, especially. Yeah, when people see that A24 logo, getting, they think yeah, this yeah, is going right. to be fucking nuts. Yeah. And so you combine that with like a medieval tale. It's like, yeah. are you fucking kidding me? Like that's right. going to be out of its mind. And then this trailer, it's like, is that Fox talking? Mm-hmm. Holy shit. That, that was a uh, move that I was like, ooh, this is going to, this is not maybe the movie everyone expected it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, this but is going to be it's weird. probably going to be what they expect it to be. It's just, it's weird to see a movie with this much mainstream hype where we didn't know what it was before. Right. And it's not like the source material has a lot of followers, you know, like not everyone is like, oh, hell yeah. I remember this shit from <laughs> literature. Yeah, class. This is good. It's not a super popular story. No. Yeah. It just looks good. Uh, it just looks good. And the visuals look good and stuff. I totally get it. I'm not saying yeah. it's not going to be good. I just don't. Yeah, it's it's I, one I of think those weird they, things. I mean, uh, yeah, they really smart. Like the, the what one of the appealing things about the poem is that it has like that crazy hook in it yeah. where the green knight shows up. He's like, okay, just somebody hits me. And hit then me, yeah. Gawain's like, all right, cuts his head off. They just puts his head back on. He's like, all right, see you in a year. Like mm-hmm. that's yeah. bone chilling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, That's a real bummer. That's a it's real also bummer. such a good hook though. It's like in a it's year, a you have year. a whole year just to think about just this. Just to like, think about it. And I, you're not- going, you're being haunted. Yeah. From afar by a demon. <laughs> you know, you have like, no idea what, it's what's great. gonna happen. And people didn't know that until this trailer. That's yeah. that like they know I mean maybe they looked into it. I don't know what who are these people? Who are anyone? Who, I don't who know. is the audience? I don't know. I've lost touch. It's us. It's all of us. I it's guess like film geeks. But did they A twenty four remember when like focus used to be A twenty four? Where you see the focus oh, yeah. logo Lost yeah. in and Translation because like, oh, they had like Michelle Gondry mm-hmm. and that, like it's that it's there's yeah, always like snatch yeah there's oh, no, always wait, that was an indie gems. i'm sorry oh right you but there's always that thing where people love <laughs> people do love indie films just like there's that mainstream top yeah. of, top tippy tippy top of indie films um and that's that's what this is this is like everybody's gonna go out and be like yeah i'm seeing an indie Guys, film but it's imagine you know everybody will see it imagine or if everybody's solos into that. had this kind of hype around it yeah. What's that? Imagine if solos had this hype around it. Oh, that, God. that would truly be confusing. Just yeah, yeah, be exhausting. It is. It is funny to be talking about the Green Knight as an indie movie, which it is, but it's also mm-hmm. gonna probably open in like two thousand screen size. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. the top again, top indie movie. Uh, yeah. It's the art. It's art house films. It's not indie yes. movies because indie movies yeah. mean you're independent. This has right, right. looks this, and yeah. feels independent, but made by a way. studio. Yeah, and it's got Joel Edgerton in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. <laughs> oh. mm-hmm. uh, I'm so excited! A, he's a bright, sweet bomb for my soul. Yeah, yeah. sweet bomb. He he loves AE24. They got a great relationship. Yeah, wasn't he yeah. in the It Comes at Night or whatever? Yep. Mm-hmm. There it is. Um, the weirdest thing to me, though, is, again, this director doing Pete's Dragon, mm. he's also doing Peter Pan next. Oh, he's like, real imaginative. He's, yeah. He has something happened to him <laughs> where, like, Disney has him. Like, they got they they clearly have him for a few films. And he's doing them while mm. he's doing this other stuff. Man, that's quite it's a, really weird. I just imagine him walking into meetings with, like, he's got, like, fairies with lutes and shit yeah. all around him. Like, he's just bringing a renaissance around those are some i mean imaginative if his, tales 
if his Peter Pan and Wendy looks like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Into no, it. I feel like he walks into Disney offices and they're like, "Green Knight, that's pretty cool." None of that shit. You hear me? <laughs> yeah. None of that <laughs> shit. They shit. might. Yeah. Yeah. Disney has yeah. been known to do that. Yeah. We they, love what you be- did with that. Come on board. Okay, we don't want you to do anything like what you did yeah. in that movie. Yeah. They're like, all right, go out and shoot some footage of like some force and stuff that you like. It comes back. Yeah. No, too dark green. Brighten those <laughs> greens up. We need it to look like Hook. <laughs> right. Uh, for, also, for a talking several... snowman in there, we're going to shatter <laughs> yeah. your kneecaps. <laughs> we love the talking fox stuff. Really? The, the talking fox was the part that you loved the Green Knight. Yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's yeah. like that's what spoke to them. Yeah. Really? Because you're Disney. I'm pretty sure you make foxes talk all the time on the reg. It's like, no. It's very imaginative. We liked it. (laughs) (laughs) That's how pitch meetings work, I guess. Yeah, that's exactly how they work. (laughs) Should we move on? We should probably move on. Probably. All right. Well, we're going to get into news stories. But first, we have some more patrons to thank. Patrons such as E.T., the extravagant terrestrial. Mm. Uh, Thank you to Cody Johnston's Time Machine Noise. Woo. Thank you to Pete for Pagel. Thank you to Glitteress. Woo. Thank you to Thanks for Having Jason Pargin on. Here's 25 bucks. Thank you to the Midnight Patron. What patrons at midnight? Woo. Thank you to Exploding Runes. Mm. Thank you to Andrew. Andrew, how? How? Mm. Thank you to Vincent. Thank you to Rev MD. All right, let me jump in here. Thank you. Thank you to John Munez. Thank you to Wavy Rancheros. Thank you, Thank you to Thank you. Dr. DNA. Thank you to Gloran Gucci. Thank you to James Ooh. Rainey. Thank you yeah. to Bootler Bootlison. Oh, Thanks yeah. to Grumblebee. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Tux. Tux. Thanks to Ricky Cilantro. Ricky. Thanks to Norm. Norm from Cheers. Norm. Tux. So, we got these Adult Swim movies coming out. Yep. Yeah, Venture Brothers, Metalocalypse, and the Aqua Teen. Yeah. Hmm? I don't know what they're... I, I guess Venture Brothers does need to be completed. Yeah. Uh, Is Metalocalypse still Metalo- around? Metalocalypse needs to be completed. Like the uh, mm. the Doom Doomstar Requiem, I think. the Whatever the rock opera they ended with ended with like a cliffhanger. Right. So. Okay. So both Venture Brothers and Metalocalypse, I get. Aqua Teen, it's like, yeah, fuck it. Sure. Yeah. I think I'm that's, pretty sure yeah. they're... I'm pretty sure that's what the Adult Swim is thinking as well. <laughs> they're Forget. grabbing you know their... Three, they're probably grabbing three of their, you know, popular uh, properties that have ended. Uh, to in it, this is right. this is. I am certain this is to get people to subscribe to HBO Max. Yeah, yeah. You know what's funny though? This reminded me. Remember when the first Aqua Teen movie came out? Yes. And it was exciting, and you'd go to a theater, and you're like, "Oh my god, Aqua Teen in a theater!" Yeah. Versus like. When the Deadwood movie came out, it was like, oh, cool, a two-hour episode of Deadwood I can watch at home. Mm. Yep. Like mo- like the movie version of a TV show, you're right. it's not quite the same anymore, is it? Yep. Not really. It's, you're right, especially because long form is the norm. Yeah, and it's like it's just binge-watching. It's just they made a it's few like, episodes. Uh, yeah. That's it. Yeah, and I think that's not- kind of how teleplay should work because also the standard yeah. for what we base TV on and the narrative kind of breadth of like the way that TV's gone in the last two decades has clearly indicated that TV can tell better stories than movies um, yes. because they have a longer duration and people are willing. Yeah. We, what we found out is people more, are willing to do that more. I'm not necessarily better, but like more involved, more, more involved, uh, yeah. more sprawling, right. more, yeah, more in yeah. depth. So stories. that's right. That's right. All of this news. It's almost, it, it's like, it's, it's for that reason like it's the same when i heard about the deadwood movie i was like oh that's great i mean why not just get another season but that's great that's great you have a movie mm-hmm. it's that where it's like it's almost disappointing yeah because it's like oh they canceled venture brother oh but you get a movie and it's like yeah but that's like four episodes like just do well it's like two versus like 10 two hours versus like 10 hours or an hour and a well, half venture versus... brothers is, is a yeah, half that's, hour. Right. yeah. that's right 30 minutes so it's I don't know it's um, it's still good. I yeah. mean I'm not yeah, against but it. I think you're you're absolutely on point. Uh, the perception of what a TV like f- film like six seasons in a movie uh, that has transformed. Yeah, it's a downgrade. Like this feels like a downgrade mm-hmm. because it's not like it's not really going to be in theaters probably. Yeah, it's back to like this is like Trial of the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, like it's back to that horseshit. <clears throat> 
Yeah, but, which has nothing I mean, to say about Adult Swim. This no, is not all at all. just this is all just streaming shit now. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I am happy to be getting all of these. Yeah, yeah I will watch all of these. Yes. I just they should do more. Mm-hmm. I want more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, man. It seeing is, that Aqua Teen movie in the theater, holy shit! It is yeah, it weird incredible. though. We do. I, the reason I think Dave's point is in, like interesting is like the thing that we're about to talk about. Sequels often do have clout in movies. We still are oh. convinced that it's a sequel. Oh, hell yeah. More, yeah. you know, like I'm really into the shit. Uh, when it's a TV show, it's not seen. It, it's not like episode two, the sequel, you know, right. No one's like, Oh, hell yeah. It's like, no, I watched 18 hours of this show. Uh, I'm ready for 18 more hours. Well, right. come on, man. They just worked an hour and a half and yeah, they, ki- they killed it. But it's just enough. They've maxed out at like three hours, like four hours yeah. tops, you know. And it's like, why are you so? Or why are we so like? Oh, I'm losing my fucking mind. <laughs> it's yeah. It's the past year has done a lot to demystify uh, movies and the theater going experience. You're right. Yeah. Our perceptions yeah. of what content yeah. is. <laughs> yeah. Like I have boy. <laughs> There's boy, a whole boy. new definition of what i will and will not pay to see in a theater now yeah yeah <laughs> it's just like oh my god i'm not watching yeah i don't know which hey i'm that more content out there i'm a big fan yeah yeah uh, b- that brings us to the next news which is that they've added a shitload of cast to knives out too uh uh who's the new one tom uh katherine hahn was All announced right, and today. Janelle Monet, She's killing um, it. Edward Norton, <laughs> Dave Bautista. Yep. Um, uh, for this big ass sequel, which they've also they're going to be a third one too, right? There's going to be a bunch. Netflix paid Netflix paid half a billion dollars it's for Knives Out. Basically, the only what? thing Ryan Johnson will be doing are for these, the next ten years. So wait, mm-hmm. are these all supposed to be like um, Agatha Christie's? Like what? I don't Probably. understand. Probably. Pro- yeah, Dan- Danny Craig. He's the thread, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just going to be hilarious. like, yeah, because he's not the movie at all. He's like, no, no. He, it feels he plays like almost no part in the movie. Yeah. Which and I think it's fine. I was it's about fine. to get to that. Knives Out. The point of Knives Out didn't feel like it was a serialized thing. No, the no, point of didn't. Knives Out is that he completely upended the Who Done It. Right. Right. Because there's not even really a murder, and the detective doesn't. No. Matter. Yeah. It's, right. Yeah. It's a. It's, it's a one a, shot. Yeah, it's not a whodunit. It's a it's a subversion of it, and it's just pointing out how shitty this family is too. Mm-hmm. Um, it's great. The, why do I get really hardcore Ocean's Eleven vibes off of this, where they're just going to keep adding cast oh, and like yeah, stunt casting, dude. and it's going to get bloated and weird, and like the plots are going to get more and more convoluted. It might. It might. Uh, that's I'm getting Ocean's Eleven. I mean, like this feels like. Doesn't this feel like it replaces the hole that Ocean Eleven filled for people? No. Right. Where it's Remember. like it's fun. It's a it's a caper. It's it's big cast, lots of laughs, but like fun for the whole family. There's like doesn't that? Yeah. So it gives you that vibe, right? Absolutely. And I think um, there's something that people forget about Ryan Johnson is that like he he's not I think what we collectively think of him as because he's done some really good stuff like he's done yeah he's done yeah he's and he's kind of like like Soderbergh yeah exactly and he's like at his best he's like he's a Soderbergh too uh yeah absolutely right but he also is a type of guy uh sometimes we forget that also will go like yeah J.J. Abrams I'll take over Star Wars for a film I don't mind that that doesn't seem like a weird career decision for right. someone who's a lot of trying to have, that, but he didn't mind it. Yeah. But I, I think most people aren't going to turn down a star Wars, but like, I do think that the caliber of director they were looking for would be someone who's like, so driven to like cycle their career into a specific thing of like, that's not the type of thing I do. Um, that, you would expect that out of someone like a Soderbergh. He's not that guy. He's not Soderbergh at all. No, he's not because I think he likes money more. I think he he's going to do the Star Wars trilogy. Mm-hmm. He's Soderbergh like has that thing where he'll do an Ocean's Eleven, but then he'll do Unsane and he'll go. He'll move away from it. Yeah. Um, he, also he reminds sp- me of Coppola. Like Coppola just kept making right. films and nobody noticed because um, he's like, "Fuck the studio system. I'm going to go make." 
this bullshit over here. Yeah. So um, Brian Johnson feels like he doesn't it, understand like when it's big. Like Ocean's Eleven was a yeah. big deal, really. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> you know, like I just, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, he one hundred percent has that energy. Yeah, Soderbergh is he's he. It feels like he's always making films for himself. They just happen to be films that we like too. I th- some yeah, of the time. I think Ryan Johnson does that as well because he. Yes, but he it's made just... the he made the Star Wars he wanted to make, and he still applied his. I did not like the movie, but he still applied his sensibilities to it. Like he subverted yeah. a couple. Like that's what he, he does. He made he made the best Star Wars out of the new ones that were all bad. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, because fucking that, that's a different podcast. That's a different podcast. No, no. That's why we like him is because he is yes. he's not just doing what the studio tells him. The studio just lets him do his own thing. Um, I just it just seems like with these knives out, it's like don't fall into this hole, right? Yeah, don't, we'll we'll see. I want to see you make we'll a, see. a looper, I think or he's... like I want to see you go back to make you know the movies that made we us like you. Yeah, I, I think he's capable of whatever we're calling integrity or whatever the thing we yeah. like about him. But I just wanted us to all remember he's the type of person who's like I like money a lot. So yeah, he likes money. I think that there will be like. It is absolutely on the in the cards that Knives Out turns into a fucking mess. Uh, I think over I think two movies. Yeah. I think it's more likely to than not. I guess is what I'm saying right. is because one, the nature of the first movie, like we said, isn't a whodunit. It's a subversion on a whodunit. It's almost an so anti-franchise. <laughs> yeah, it's yes, anti-franchise. Exactly. 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 That's it's bizarre to me that like we're doing it that. it yeah. defies you to make a series of films about like, Daniel Craig right. as, a, as a detective because he's an entertaining character, sure. And I guess you could do like right. a Clouseau uh, yeah. movie series about him, but like he's it's not he's not like. Columbo, so, and he's, you know, it's like right, it's not right, like, and everybody's very excited, and they're like, "Oh, do the thing again!" Yeah. And it's like, it's like asking M Night Shyamalan to do a uh, sequel to The Sixth Sense, where it's like he can't do the thing again. Right. The the <laughs> thing you liked the thing because it can only be done once. Uh, yeah, and like so Netflix, I don't know if people realize that it's yeah. Netflix presents No Country for Old Men two. Right. You know, yeah. it's like, what the fuck are you doing? But I I also I I get the liking money I get like if you wrote something that were like this is a one shotter and then they're like we're gonna give you all, all the money mm-hmm. to make like five of these I'd be like yeah I bet I could make that happen yeah <laughs> you know yeah yeah g- g- give me the money hand it over here yeah, well, yeah I mean I'll this get, was you this this was the result like they I don't think they cold yeah. called him this I'm pretty sure this was the result of of intense <laughs> uh, studio bidding I like the cold call version yeah. I like Netflix calls. So, like, I'm pretty sure he was shopping this. Yeah, really? Yeah, you're probably right. Um, yeah. and, Nef- and Netflix was like, we will give you half a billion dollars. And he said, yeah. deal. Yep. Like, yep. <laughs> Which, you know, respect. Yeah, I mean, yeah. A, a lot of that money's going to Daniel Craig, too. There's a reason that number is so high is they're buying out residuals that they would normally mm-hmm. get. But mm-hmm. anyway. Edward Norton. Didn't expect to see. Oh him. yeah, because isn't he Edward a direct- Norton's kind of been under the radar, right? He's always been yeah. directing. Yeah, is that it? Is that what's going and on well, with him? He's been he's been motherless Brooklyning around. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> he's gonna be in. The, oh yeah, he, Edward. He's gonna be I, in the next Wes Anderson, as he always is. Oh yeah. But yeah, he was in like Birdman, and then was like, "Peace out, motherfuckers." Yeah, you're right. He was. I feel like I don't know. I, I, yeah, he doesn't seem like the type to want to act as much anymore. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what it is. What does he have? He doesn't have anything to prove to anybody. I he's think well, there was all that shit with the Incredible Hulk. I think, I think he has a lot of creative ideas that aren't good. I've does heard that, that makes about sense. Him. Yeah, yeah, and like every time he tries to take control of a thing, it doesn't really work out. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what that means for him. I that's another podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nor- Norton podcast. Yeah. But yeah, I got thoughts. <laughs> we all got thoughts. <laughs> Let's move on. Fun. All right. I want to talk about keeping the faith though. You guys want to talk about <laughs> Yes, keep we're going to do that on Norton keep. cast. Yeah. All right. All right, yeah, all right it's Norton right, cast, right. baby. Norton cast. Norton cast. Um, we got some more got some more producers to thank. Um thank you to Space McNulty. Ooh. Thank you to Hiram. Thank you to, oh, great, it's that guy. Thank you to Nolan Mayton. 
Thank you to vaccinated man Andrew McGuire shoving that in our face. Uh, thank you to Ozzy. Thank you to AJ. Woo. Thank you to Tip Drizzle. Thank you to Frank Lee Amish. Let me step in here. Thank you, thank you to Burrito Mouth. Thank Burritos. you to Mrs. Voitis. Thank you to the thank ghost you. of Dave Thomas. Thank you. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Thank, thank you. you to David Knife Boot. Henson Knife NBA Boot. CPA. Thank you, Christopher Roberts Bartz, Esquire. Woo. Thanks to Mackenzie. Ooh. Fuck shuffling with Willem Dafoe's confusingly large <laughs> Dan Chill. Oh, yeah. Thanks to Vaccinated J. Thank and you. And thank you to Pie Guy. Pie Guy. Dave. Keeping the faith. You did it. Dave. Starring Ben Stiller. Dave. Dave. What? We're not what? 90 minutes into this show. Mm. Uh, Jesus. What? Fuck. Would you like to talk about a movie that deserves more hype it can be keeping the faith <laughs> all right let's talk about keeping the faith no um yeah i do 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 good uh this is a movie called uh sound of violence sound of violence <laughs> this is coming out may 21st of this year it looks very indie it looks rough around the edges um a little bit yeah it's about a a woman in 2002 witnesses her father kill her mom with a cleaver and then she kills her dad in self-defense um and uh wait let's see if i get this right she she had all right this is like telling a bad joke she had lost her hearing and then when when she kills her father her hearing comes back uh and then fast forward to her as an adult and she is an experimental musician and into sound. And it's basically she just starts murdering people because she's really into the sounds of them dying. It's Sound yes. of Metal, but with murder. <laughs> exactly. Sound of Metal, but with murder. Uh, Which I assume is like, it's like, it's like spawned from the, the experience as a kid. Right. I assume. It's kind of, it feels very American Psycho-y where like. A little bit. She's yeah. in this society. She's killing people. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's really into it. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. What do you guys think of this? I gotta be honest with you, Dave. I'm, uh, this one didn't work on me. Although I do think that they are cowards uh, for not titling this movie DJ Murder. Uh, DJ Murder? But, yeah, it doesn't do it for me. The f- Like, I can't help but get around the fact that like you can create sounds, and they will for the movie, better right. sounds by not actually killing people like that's not a good way to get sounds of murder so clearly <laughs> clear you mean yeah lo- the way they made the sounds hopefully they didn't they kill didn't anybody ki- the movie yeah so i, I don't know like hopefully it, but like i i guess that as like a concept or a conceit i can you know that's that can be fine it's just not my favorite thing uh the fact that the hearing and stuff like that does feel like that's weird that there's so many movies about someone losing their hearing and like doing a musical thing. We're real. It's all the rave right yeah, now. we're real Mozarting it up or whatever. <laughs> or was it Beethoven? I forget who's who can't hear. Um, Beethoven. Beethoven. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. It does look cool in terms of like a cool concept for a serial killer, but it feels like a like an X Files episode. Let me tell you, Abe. Yeah. This is these aren't movies that'll definitely be good. Mm-hmm. They're movies that just deserve more, more hype. hype. Yeah. It That's doesn't fair. mean yeah. It, uh, this is up in the. I'm also a little doubtful to be honest mm-hmm. in this one. Mm-hmm. It's a new director. It's got pretty good ratings, but mm-hmm. there are people who um, didn't like it. Um, I'm just I I I. I it looks interesting, mm-hmm. and I hadn't heard about it. Mm-hmm. And it's coming out this month. Yeah. Yeah. Probably does deserve more hype. I'm on board. It deserves more hype. You're on board, Tom? Yep. All right. Yeah, I mean it Tough words. Again, it really Tom. could go either way. I'm I no, like I I am like I'm not certain about this, but that's every movie with trailers, you know? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's 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 a slasher movie with a hook that's interesting to me. So, yeah. I'll check it out. Yeah, I'll throw it a hype, you know? Just a Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it deserves a little bit more hype, but it's like, you know, that, that feels weird to end your hype cast on like yeah a little bit of hype well whose fault is that that's in that i mean you chose it be be a better guest (laughs) hey tom over here excited wordy be more excited like tom (laughs) no look look 
Look. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. Listen, Andy. I'm listening. I don't know. Be a better guess. <laughs> better guess. <laughs> no, you're great. You're great. Cut you're that great. shit no. out. Cut that shit out. Get more. No, Act that's high. the point. Is the point is that it's a movie that people haven't heard of that looks like it could be good, I and think, I think yeah. it could be good. I think the main actress in it seems to be doing a great job. Um, it looks like it could be really intense. Um, or yeah, maybe it's a big wet fart like fucking Abe wants, <laughs> shit, rooting for it to am fail. I the guy? Uh, I shouldn't have said anything. I should have just what did what Tom said and just said, no, "Yeah, I, I don't." It's I cool. actually don't want to start a precedent where guests feel like they have to like the movie that deserves more hype. <laughs> I, 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 I do. Don't I don't want, want to start okay. that. <laughs> yeah, or where the guests are really of course nervous. Tom does. Then Tom doesn't have to speak as much. Tom loves yeah, yeah, not yeah. speaking. <laughs> Fucking Tom, uh, dude, not pulling his weight over here. Everybody, everybody, Listen, check man. out the trailer for Sound of Violence. I'm happy to let you guys talk it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, if you do that, it's why you get an hour and a half ep- long episodes. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, I had fun though. I want to keep this is going. Cool. Yeah, I want to keep talking <laughs> about stuff. What are people? What's what's everybody up to? <laughs> Oh, What's you know, doing I'm recording a podcast. Uh, yeah, currently. Cool, I've cool, been cool, developing cool. this uh, Edward Norton podcast recently. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's going to be pretty sweet. It's going to be pretty sweet. We're f- having trouble finding the first movie, though. I'm thinking something around 2000. Something, something around on. the year 2000. That's <laughs> yeah. like a right. deconstruction of a of, oh. of a of an old, very old tropey joke. Yeah. Real quick. That sounds Sorry. Perfect. This movie, uh, Sound of Violence, uh, it has James Jagger in it. Yes, it does. Yeah. Sorry. Just got to point that out. That's Mick Jagger's son. One of. So, <laughs> Mick Jagger's one of. One of, one of his yeah, known yeah, yeah, yeah. sons. <laughs> one of his many children. Yeah. Statistically speaking, if you're in a building, it's there's a Jagger. <laughs> right. He's like, He's like yeah. the Genghis the Khan yeah. of the yeah. modern age. Statistically speaking, one of us is related <laughs> to <laughs> Mick Jagger. Is, yeah, Spawn <laughs> of Mick Jagger. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all, all of our mothers. Yeah, I had a Jagger phase. Yeah. yeah Everybody yeah. goes through it. Yeah. 70% of people on this earth has touched his semen <laughs> in some way. Yeah, whether you know it whether or not. Whether it's on a couch. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just, it's on it's everywhere. It may, it may, we were talking about the Incredible Hulk earlier. It may be Stan, a Stan Lee Fago sitch. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's a so. <laughs> that's a so. Yeah. Thanks for having Abe. me on. Abe, yes, thank you so much for doing it. What mm-hmm. do you want to talk about, buddy? Uh, check us out on uh, Small Beans. Uh, that's yeah. patreon.com slash small beans. We're also available. Uh, that's if you want to get all the episodes early. We also have, you can check us out on SoundCloud or anywhere you find podcasts. Um, yeah, that's it. We're working. Give them a review. Give them a review. A review yeah. of my own thing i do no i'm saying people should give them a review oh yeah yeah please do please do and uh we got some projects we're working on both of you guys mm-hmm. are a part of one of them i'm very excited yeah. about we're doing our yeah, audio man. play again bean town part two uh, that's coming yeah, out yeah, yeah, yeah. it's gonna come out in like a month or so oh i'm so excited to hear that yeah oh uh, yeah it makes me so happy the bean it's gonna be um, it's really funny you all are really funny <laughs> yay uh we we have a patreon me and tom uh, patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed if you go on there you got exclusive podcasts like tom and jeff watch batman mm. and fox Mulder is a maniac mm. there's also and this is if you go to small beans as well there's an exclusive podcast that we share called star trek the next futurama Woo. uh you're gonna need to subscribe to both of us uh, to get that mm-hmm. that's, that's how we get you it's called like synergy yeah yeah we <laughs> fucked you yeah, we're we like sony you. and marvel baby yeah, yeah baby <laughs> In our competition, we both benefit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a really good show, though. I'm so glad both of you guys. Like, you guys are perfect. The perfect. Yeah, I two. would pay. I would pay money to talk about Star Trek with Swain. Yeah. Like I would. I. It's heaven. He's a yeah. delight. Yeah. I'm super jealous of you. Actually. I mean, I get enough yeah. Swain as it is. I get plenty well, of Swain. Guess people. I'm sure. Nah, I don't. You can no. Stick just people in fucking there. stick to the hits, my man. It'll be like a four-hour-long episode, but we can get guests. Yeah, man. yeah. You do what you do, you. But I'm telling you, it's a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> you do what you think is right, but I'm yeah. telling you, one of those choices is wrong. <laughs> is wrong. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, we also have a store, tpublic.com slash stores slash Gamefully Unemployed, where you can get t-shirts, masks, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of things. Check that out. Mm-hmm. Out. Yummy. Yeah. All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Say goodbye, everyone. Bye. 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 Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.